In this session, we are presenting RevWorks Reverse Engineering Software for SOLIDWORKS. RevWorks is a single window integrated application that allows you to collect data directly from physical parts to make it easier to build your models with inside SOLIDWORKS. The RevWorks product presents as a toolbar that may float or dock to the bottom or top of your computer workspace. RevWorks provides multiple options for collecting features from your part. Most of the options also provide multiple ways to go about collecting the data. You can also take measurements from your part without creating features, create surfaces. There are also managers for allowing you to create part coordinate systems which align your part into SOLIDWORKS, managing probes of your device. You can also access settings from the toolbar as well as the help system. Lastly, the toolbar contains a set of indicators which give you the status of RevWorks operations at all times. RevWorks options are also available within the SOLIDWORKS menus. We will be using a Microscribe digitizer to take data on the part today, and in the lower right-hand corner, you'll see the actual part that we're digitizing. Before capturing features from your part, you should align it to the SOLIDWORKS model space. This is done with the assistance of the RevWorks Alignment Manager. The Alignment Manager provides several dataming options. Each dataming option provides a specific way in which you will collect data from your part to create the alignment. The custom datum option, for example, allows you to select specific part features in order to create your alignment. RevWorks also supports leapfrogging. Leap sets within RevWorks provide a way to define a large working volume in which you can move the digitizer from station to station to enable you to digitize parts much larger than the digitizer's working volume. RevWorks provides two methods for collecting data. The first is single point, the second is scan point. When working with prismatic features, it's often easier to use single point data collection. We're going to start by taking uh, the RevWorks box command and using it to collect data from the part and automatically create geometry from those points captured. I'm going to start by taking several points along the edge of the part. You can use um, buttons on the digitizer itself or keyboard commands. And you see how quickly we developed geometry you know, from the data collected. You'll also notice that the, uh, the points are offset from the features. Uh, that indicates that we've compensated for the probe ball radius. Now at this point, we have a, a curve feature that we want to collect. And uh, it would actually be easier to do that by using the SOLIDWORKS fill it command. So we can select that command. And rather than creating a feature directly with RevWorks, we're going to come up and we're going to just measure a radius. That information was pasted straight to the Windows clipboard, and you also see it uh, displayed up on the RevWorks toolbar. So we can take that value and paste it directly you know, into SOLIDWORKS. And select the lines where we want that curve applied, and accept. So that quickly we can actually go ahead and start creating profiles that are useful for developing solid features. One of the things that uh, RevWorks uniquely allows is to digitize while you're inside other SOLIDWORKS commands. So again, we're going to um, uh, pull up a, a SOLIDWORKS feature. We're going to do an extrusion this time. And within the SOLIDWORKS extrusion dialog box, we're still going to come up to uh, RevWorks and select the depth command this time, and then take a sampling from the part so we know how far we want to extrude. And that information that we just collected, we can come over and we can paste into the SOLIDWORKS field here, accept, and we have that quickly a solid form to work with. To begin collecting data in RevWorks, you can select any planar face in your SOLIDWORKS model. RevWorks will automatically create a sketch on that face for you. You can easily collect multiple instances of a feature. With RevWorks Continuous Mode, features are automatically generated once you reach a maximum number of points that you've set. And then you can go on and collect the next feature. This makes it very quick to collect multiple features.
RevWorks uses best fitting statistical analysis to uh, create the best feature through the data you collect. So you can actually collect many um, points for every feature. By collecting multiple points, you're more likely to uh, get a better feature because you will be averaging out any possibility of any uh, particular point uh, being taken where there was a part blemish. And to complete this feature, we're going to simply uh, use the SOLIDWORKS um, uh, cut extrude command to finish. RevWorks' second form of primary data collection is called scanning, and that would be used to collect data along features where you really have no hard edge to follow, such as with this feature of the part. In this method of data collection, a SOLIDWORKS plane will be the actual triggering mechanism for collecting data. That way, we make sure that the data collected follows a specific section that we set through the part. In order to scan data along a section, we first have to set a plane along which we'll take that cut. RevWorks provides several tools for setting you know, what plane we want to use by digitizing it. In this case, we're going to choose an offset to the top plane. And we take the probe of our digitizer and place it where we want that plane to be and select that point. This plane is where our sketch will be created and it will be the basis for collecting our data. Before we start collecting data, we're actually going to uh, set up RevWorks uh, to start the scanning process. Uh, first of all, we're going to switch to scan mode. We're also going to come over and do some uh, display adjustments. Uh, first of all, we're going to change from part coordinates to sketch coordinates. In sketch coordinates, the Z value presented is actually the depth of the, uh, the plane, or the distance of the probe, in our case, you know, from the plane. So we're also going to show a position window and limit that to the Z depth only because that's going to be you know, useful to us. Now we're going to go over and choose the spline command and you'll see as we move the probe you know, closer to the plane that we selected the value of Z goes to you know, zero and values around. Now we're not collecting data yet. In order to start the data process we'll choose one of our uh, data collection buttons, either a keyboard command or a button on the digitizer itself to actually start the process. And when we do that, now then when we press uh, the probe th through the part, you can hear that we're collecting data as the probe passes through the plane. I'm using a serpentine motion of the probe through the plane uh, to catch data along its length. At any time, we can press um, you know, the space bar or a key on the digitizer and um, uh, thereby allow us to reposition without taking data you know, as the probe passes through the plane. And when we're ready to go again, just press uh, our button and we're back to it. And there we have the completed feature. And so what we created at this point is a spline along that designated uh, cut line that was set you know, with the plane that we, we selected. And as with other features, you'll notice that uh, the plane itself, or the, 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 the feature itself, is offset to compensate for the ball radius. So at this point, we need to um, you know, do some actual SOLIDWORKS so, you know, feature manipulation. I'm going to close the position window so we've got more work area to work with. And we'll go ahead and trim out the sketch to create uh, a feature we can extrude. In order to complete this profile, we're going to use a couple of simple SOLIDWORKS commands. And with that line, we're going to um, trim and extend this feature. Okay, and now we have a profile that we can extrude.
In order to get the distances that we need to extrude, we're going to go back to our measure tools in RevWorks and capture the depth. Okay, there's the first value. We will paste that into the window and we're going to activate the second direction. Also measure that value. Paste that value into the window and then we can accept. And with just a few more measurements, we have a completed part. In this demonstration, we've shown many of the options that RevWorks provides. There are many more features available. To learn more about RevWorks, contact your local SolidWorks reseller, or you can contact RevWare directly.